So we are going to do the integral from zero to infinity of x to the negative natural log x times x natural log x dx. Now notice that everything in this integral is written in terms of two things, x and natural log x. If the whole integral is in terms of x and natural log x, 99% of the time, it's going to help out a ton to substitute u equals natural log x. That's because we can take e to the power of both sides and get that x is equal to e to the u, and therefore dx equals e to the u du. So it doesn't really matter whether we have a du ready in this integral, we can do the substitution anyway. That transforms all these x's and natural logs into exponentials, which are often a lot easier to deal with. So in this situation, what we're going to get is the integral from natural log of 0 as we approach 0 from the positive direction, the natural log is going to approach negative infinity. And then the natural log of infinity is still infinity. So we get right here, x is equal to e to the u. And then negative natural log x is negative u. Then we multiply by here, x is again e to the u, and the natural log of x is u. And then dx is e to the u du. So if we expand all of this out, we're going to get the integral from negative infinity to infinity. This e to the u times negative u, that's e to the negative u squared. And then we have two more exponentials here, e to the u times e to the u, which we can write as e to the 2u as well. I'm going to bring that inside of the same negatives we were looking at before. So we have e to the power of negative u squared minus 2u. That way everything is in terms of this one exponential that we're looking at here. What we can do from here is try to figure out a substitution to get rid of this u squared minus 2u. That's really weird to work with. We want to try and get rid of that. So if we're looking at a quadratic expression, of course one thing we can always try is completing the square. Because remember, if we can complete the square and write this expression as u minus something squared, we can always substitute the inside, and the substitution will always work out because we don't have to worry about our du. So in this case, u squared minus 2u, we can write that as u squared minus 2u plus 1 minus 1. And the reason we want this plus 1 is because when I see u squared minus 2u, I'm thinking u minus 1 squared. u minus 1 squared gives us that u squared minus 2u, but then we also have a negative 1 squared, which is a plus 1. So this part right here becomes u minus 1 squared, and then we just subtract 1 on the end. So we can put that inside of our integral right here. So we plug this part in here. Remember that because we had a negative out front already, minus a minus gives us this plus 1 on the very outside. Now what is this plus 1 exactly? Well remember, this is e to the negative u minus 1 squared plus 1. Well we can split up the exponent as e to the negative u minus 1 squared times e to the first power. But e to the first power is just a constant, that's just e. So we can take that all the way out of the integral to the very outside. And now we're looking at a much more convenient expression. We need to get this e to the negative u minus 1 squared a little simpler. So let's make another substitution. We'll let w equal u minus 1. Then dw equals du. And we don't have to worry about the bounds because infinity plus 1, that's still infinity. We get e times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of this u is going to become w plus 1. So that's going to make our lives a little more difficult. Let's see how we can do that we can split up the integral into two different parts based on this w plus 1. First, let's look at the part with just w. We get w times e to the negative w squared dw, and then we add e times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative w squared dw times 1, doesn't matter. Now what we're looking at here is two different integrals, and these are actually both pretty simple as long as you know the tricks. For this first integral here, we're looking at an integral from negative infinity to infinity. 
which is a symmetric interval about zero. And what is this function inside here? e to the negative w squared, that is an even function. But w by itself is an odd function. So we have even this e to the negative w squared times odd. And an odd function times an even function gives us another odd function. If you haven't heard about these, what an odd function means is that f of negative w equals negative f of w. If we take an integral from negative infinity to infinity of an odd function, that means the part from negative infinity to zero is going to be minus the part from zero to infinity. Those two parts are going to cancel out. And therefore, this integral here, because we're integrating an odd function over a symmetric interval, this is equal to zero. We don't have to worry about it. That means all that's left is this part on the right here, the integral of e to the negative w squared dw. And this is a very famous integral called the Gaussian integral. And it's useful because it pops up a lot when we're looking at things like normal distributions in statistics. So I'll link a video in the description that explains why the value of this integral is what it is. But right now, I'll tell you that it's equal to the square root of pi. Very cool. So what we have as our final result is this e here times the square root of pi. So the way that we got here was looking at our original integral, seeing x and natural log x, and thinking that means we're going to substitute u equals natural log x. So we can have x equals e to the u, which makes the substitution nice. From here, all we had to do is complete the square on the exponent in the inside, do a simple substitution, and split up the integral. The integral of an odd function is 0, and this is our favorite famous integral. So we get a result as e times the square root of pi.